In this video, we'll talk about combinatorial mathematics. Combinatorial mathematics is concerned with developing counting rules for given situations. And you can see here in the box that we've got the formula for the combinations. For the combinations rule, we are supposing that we have n elements to be drawn without replacement from a set of n elements. So you'll notice the capital N represents the total number of elements in the set, whereas the lowercase n tells us how many elements we're choosing or wanting to draw without replacement. In this formula, we have to know what this exclamation point represents. That's called factorial. Capital N factorial represents taking the number of elements and then multiplying by each integer falling below that. For example, 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This will allow us to do a bit of reducing when we work through the reference for class material today. One important fact to remember about factorial is that we do have a special case. 0 factorial is equal to 1. So don't forget that when you're simplifying problems. In our first example for classwork today, we're going to compute each of the following. So if we see 6 over 2 in parentheses, this actually represents a total of 6 elements in our set, and we're looking for combinations of 2. So capital N is equal to 6, while the lowercase n equals 2. The combinations rule is given here. Capital N factorial is divided by our lowercase factorial multiplied by capital N minus N factorial. So with six total elements, capital N is replaced with six factorial. Two represents our lowercase n, so we have two factorial multiplied by six minus two factorial. So we know that six minus two would make four factorial. So to expand this, 6 factorial represents 6 times 5 times 4 and so on down to 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. And then 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now do you notice that we do have some duplicate factors? That means we can do some reducing. Because all of our terms in the numerator are connected with multiplication, and all of the terms in the denominator are also connected with multiplication, we actually just have a list of factors. Any common factors can be reduced. So here in red, you can see 4, 3, 2, 1 in the denominator, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So everything in red has been reduced. Then we have some other common factors. The number 6, I'm going to factor that into 2 times 3. So now the factor of 2 can also be reduced. That leaves us 3 times 5 for the numerator and 1 for the denominator. So 3 times 5 is equal to 15. 15 over 1 simplifies as 15. So what this is really telling us is that if we have six total elements and we want to know how many combinations of 2 can be made, the answer is 15 different combinations. In the next example, 7, 0. We're looking for how many combinations of 0 can be made with a total of 7 elements. Well, 7 factorial will be divided by 0 factorial multiplied by 7 minus 0 factorial. Remember that 0 factorial is worth 1. So that is a key element right there. 7 factorial breaks down as 7 times 6 times 5 all the way down to times 1. 7 minus 0 is 7 factorial, and I've expanded that. So what we notice in our next step, everything in red reveals identical factors. So everything in red is completely reducing to 1. So I really have 1 over 1, which makes 1. So think about that. You have a total of seven elements, and you are not making any combinations. So the only way those elements could be arranged is one way, the original way that they are. So notice the pattern with reducing. 
Do you always need to completely expand the multiplication? This thought will be helpful when we look at the next example. In our final example, it's asking us to compute the number of ways you can select n elements from capital N elements for each of the following. So instead of giving us originally the parenthesis notation, we are given the lowercase value of 3. That means we want 3 elements in the group. Capital N equal to 10 means there are 10 elements total to work with. So the notation would be 10 over 3 in parenthesis. Notice there is no fraction bar. This is not a fraction. It is the combinatorial notation. So the capital N would be 10 factorial, which I have expanded from 10 times 9 all the way down to times 1. In our denominator, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And finally, 10 minus 3 factorial would really be 7 factorial. So 7 factorial is right here in red. Notice in red, I've highlighted those common factors. So each of those factors will reduce completely down to 1. That leaves 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 times 2 times 1. Though even though none of those numbers look exactly the same, we may be able to do some reducing. Or you could simply say 10 times 9 times 8 makes 720. The denominator 3 times 2 times 1 gives us 6. And you could take 720 and divide that by 6 to get 120. The other option that I was talking about, I could say, well, 10 could reduce with 2, leaving 5. 9 could reduce with 3, leaving 3. So 5 times 3 times 8 would make 120 divided by 1. Or you could notice that 120 over 1 is exactly the same answer we got when we did not reduce any further. Finally, in our last example, we have n equals 23 and capital N equals 30. This means we have a total of 30 elements in the set and we're wanting to make groups of 23. How many ways can this be done? So we have 30 over 23 in the combinatorial notation. 30 factorial is the numerator. 23 factorial multiplied by capital N minus N. So 30 minus 23 will leave us 7 factorial. So I'm taking 30 factorial in the numerator, and I'm starting to write the factors. Notice I said starting to. I never completed it. Because I'm noticing by the time I get to times 23, don't I have that same value in the denominator? Because 23 factorial is our first term. So when I start expanding 23 times 22 times 21, everything that I have here in green in our denominator will be exactly the same factors that I have in the numerator. So I know that everything there will completely reduce to 1. So this is what I was leading into in our first example, that there really is no need to completely expand all the way down to times 1. Now what else do we have? We do have in the numerator 30 times 29 all the way down to times 24. So what I'm hoping for, something in my denominator maybe will reduce with one of those larger factors. And in fact, you can see that 7 multiplied by 4 would match 28. So I can reduce 28 in the denominator, so that gets rid of the 7 and the 4, with 28 in the numerator. Scanning again, I'm left with a 6, a 5, a 3, and a 2, and a 1. So 6 times 5 makes 30 in my denominator. And I notice that I have 30 also in the numerator. So my factor of 30 in the numerator will reduce with my factor of 30 in the denominator. Now that leaves 3 times 2, which is 6. So I could now reduce 6 in the denominator with the 24. So 24 divided by 6 leaves me 4. So everything that I didn't cross out is my final answer. 
I could take 29 times 27 times 26 times 25 times 4, and I should end up with 2,035,800. If you choose not to do reducing with 6 and 24, you would have ended up with this other solution, which just isn't simplified yet. Notice it is being divided by 6, and that will bring us to the same final answer. So look for opportunities to do some reducing without having to expand all the way down to 1. If you know those factors are identical, there really is no need to expand that far, especially when your numbers are this large. So I hope you find that helpful.